Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming to video, I propose that we discuss the AMD 490. Yep, it's fair to say that the Polaris range of graphics cards from AMD has been pretty successful. The issue with them, of course, is that they don't really punch past NVIDIA's GTX 1060, unless you're going crossfire, but for most folks, a single graphics card is the better solution. So, really, if you want a next generation graphics card, or rather a current generation graphics card that offers more performance, your choices are thus as follows. A crossfire solution of an RX 470-480, which isn't really ideal unless you perhaps want to do an upgrade later. For example, you've got a 1080p screen and maybe you go to 4K or 1440p. And then the other option, of course, is a Fury or a Fury X. The problem with those cards is that they are limited to 4 gigabytes of RAM per GPU, which is not particularly ideal. And the last option, of course, is something along the lines of a Pascal card GTX 1070 or above. And that is definitely something AMD fans have been wanting to um, be remedied. So the AMD 490, and yes, the AMD 490, I'm not mispronouncing it. You might expect it to be called the RX 490, but no. There are a couple of leaks slash rumors slash things which have popped up and one of the latest is from the developers behind Eve Valkyrie also known as CCP Games. Now their Steam store has since been fixed or rather updated however for a while they had oh, oh, by the way this is also an article which is linked of course as usual in the video description but for a while their Steam page listed that the card uh, for the recommended set for the, the recommended graphics card, let me start again. The recommended graphics card for their game was either a GTX 980 Ti or an AMD 490. Now, what's even more confusing about this is that in their fact, they actually listed not a 980 Ti but a GTX 1080. So it read a GTX 1080 or an AMD 490 done. Now, as I said, these have been updated since, so it no longer lists those, and now it will say something along the lines of 390 or whatever. But it is confirmation of a couple of things. The first is that, well, I guess if you take the rumor at face value and you say that it's true, that the card is at least as powerful as, let's say, between the GTX 980 Ti and, let's say, the 1080. Excuse me, that was my phone, for somehow I forgot to put it on silent. Ah, apparently it's multiple Twitter notifications because I happened to post a couple of things earlier on. And, um, I guess the other thing it reinforces is the naming convention. Once again, assuming this is accurate. Now, as I said, the fact now has been updated. In fact, there is a last edited by CC, CCP Red Cape at 18th November 2.32 p.m. But just a while back, there was also a leak. And I say it in such a tone because I guess you could call it a mistake, you could call it a leak, you could call it uh, a screw up. It really depends on how you want to take it from Sapphire. Now, Sapphire have been one of the more reliable partners from AMD when it comes to producing Radeon graphics cards. They've been with them for a long ass time, and I think that I owned a Radeon 9800, and I believe that was from Sapphire. It was either that or the X800, I can't remember which, but I, I actually it might have been both were from Sapphire, but I digress. Anyway, on their official ticketing system, which is labelled the Sapphire Global Support Ticket System, catchy name, don't you know, they had a card which was labelled as the Sapphire Radeon 490, and this card had 8 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. So it does seem that the 490 does indeed come with 8 gigabytes, which isn't surprising. Now, the final clue to all of this is an image which AMD released about their own roadmaps and how they are branding the desktop. So, basically speaking, as you are probably aware, right now AMD use a Radeon RX and then the number. Previously, it was a 
R5 or an R7 or an R9, but they've basically done away with that, and now it's the RX, and then you have the 4, which represents the generation, the next number represents the tier, and the last one represents the revision. However, they seem to be changing this, and now they're going to be calling it the Radeon 4XX. Now, this is very interesting for a couple of reasons. The first is it seems to be reinforcing the fact that they are considering changing or removing the RX name. Now, how this is going to be accomplished, why it's going to be accomplished, we don't 100% know yet. Now, the generation is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to mention that too much. But the tier is, well, pretty obvious as well. So, RX 460 is slower than the 470, and so on, and so on, and so on. The revision, however, is something they've not really used. Now, back in the days of, for example, the earlier GCNs, like the 200 series, there certainly were revisions of the card, especially when Tonga was slipped into the lineup. We know about, for example, they put in the R285, um, which was, I guess you could say, a replacement for the standard 280. However, the revision is certainly something that could be in play here. I'm not saying that it, the 490 is actually going to be a revision, it's going to be known as the 285, but um, I'm sorry, the 485, but hear me out. So this really leaves us with a couple of options. The first option is that Sapphire, CCP, and so on all screwed up. At the end of the day, it is possible. But ultimately, if you're working long hours, or you're tired, or whatever, and you're typing a whole bunch of crap, and you're copying and pasting and going between multiple documents, it's possible that you just simply type the wrong thing. The only reason I believe that this is in well unlikely or less likely is because it says AMD 490 and not AMD RX 490. If that was the case, I'd be like, okay, I could see how it happened. The second option is that the 490 is a dual graphics card solution. The reason I say that is because unless there's a super duper secret Polaris, which we don't know about, remember Polaris 10 is the full configuration of the high end or highest end SKU Polaris that we know about, that means that they can't increase the performance other than either A, releasing a higher end Polaris, or B, basically bolting two cards together. The problem with bolting two cards together, there's actually a few issues. The first is that they are labeling this as an 8 gigabyte card. Since vendors will always label a card with all of the memory, so for example, if you have a dual card and it's got listed 16 gigabytes of RAM, that means each GPU of the dual graphics card has 8 gigabytes available to it. Really, however, that means that for games, you've only got 8 gigabytes available video memory, since, as we know, assets are mirrored between the two uh, buffers. So, unless you're only looking at a total of 4 gigabytes per GPU core, I think that's fairly unlikely. The other issue with that, and this is more from a marketing slash PR standpoint, is having that amount of RAM, or GDDR5 or 5X, but we can presume GDDR5 on a graphics card with that amount of, um, you know, voltage regulators and all of that crap, it's going to really knock up the power consumption of the board, and that is something AMD are trying to get away from. I'm not saying that they wouldn't, because if they aim it, of course, as a desktop part, there is that, but it just doesn't seem a particularly elegant solution and really you can just buy two RX 480s at the moment and I don't know so there's a third option and that is Vega 10 now we've discussed Vega 10 and Vega 11 a lot on this channel so I don't want to go over the whole thing again because I'll be here for another 10 minutes but to give you the, the synopsis the too long didn't read and this is also linked in the video description if you want more of this Basically, Vega 11 is going, assuming the rumors are accurate, going to replace the Polaris lineup. Whereas Vega 10 will act as the, the, the high-end SKUs. So, what we could possibly see here is that the 490 is going to be Polaris based, or the 490 is a placeholder name, and we could get something better. So, for example, they are telling developers, or whomever, 
that hey let's just for the moment call it the 490 because it's our internal working name but you know when we get it it could be called chicken scratch we don't know what it's going to be called for the customer but just like for example how the PS4 was known as the um, I'm sorry the PS4 Pro was known as the Neo or the original PS4 was known as the Orbis or the I know the the switch was known as the NX there could be an internal code name and therefore for the in lieu of an official name AMD could just be calling it the 490 and that's how the name slipped through the cracks therefore it could be that the generation is going to be the 5 and that's how it comes to be it's just it's not really clear because there's not enough information what is rather interesting though is that AMD are going to be releasing Vega. We know that. That's that's not a mystery. That's not a rumor. We know that's happening. But we do know that Nvidia needs something to counter it. I say this based upon it would make no sense for Vega to be released and the highest end SKU is only as fast as let's say the highest end Pascal. Just for the sake of argument and this is just example if you're paying 400 bucks let's say nvidia asks 400 dollars for a card which has been out let's say a year ish and you have another card from amd and they're charging you 400 bucks but that's just come out but the two cards perform the same amd would be not exactly well received by the tech community therefore we can presume vega will actually be faster than pascal we can also base this on the fact that vega is going to have some ipc improvements it's going to have a few tweaks here and there we've talked about some of those with the ps4 pro um supposedly there is going to be some changes when it comes to the hardware schedule it's going to be more advanced and a few other bits and pieces you can check out my ps4 pro analysis i'll try to remember to link it as well in the video description but with that, combined with higher clocks, we can presume, and perhaps more GCN units, or rather compute units to use, we can presume that, yes, the card is going to be faster. So what does that mean? Well, there are some rumors which peg NVIDIA to be releasing a refreshed Pascal. Now, this refreshed Pascal is going to be built on a 14NM process, and this is thanks to their new partner, Samsung. We don't know a hell of a lot about this, but what we can presume is that this means we're going to see higher clocks, and perhaps a few other tweaks here and there, maybe for power or voltage consumption, or maybe a few tiny tweaks in architecture just to get a little bit of extra performance out of the card. Now, if you're listening to all of this and think to yourself, well, okay, does that mean the 490 is coming in January, along with what we can presume to be Zen? Unfortunately, we can only guess because there's not enough information. I would love for them to do that. Now, another final thing I will mention, and this is not really worthy of a video itself, with a couple of people linked this to me, and actually I want to, before I forget, I also want to give thanks to the chap. I won't give his full name simply for privacy reasons. I shall simply call him Rod R. R would be his uh, surname. He sent me this tip via Facebook so thanks very much to him he also sent me a post from semi accurate now this is from an author who also um, I believe they own bits and chips .it, which is as you can imagine an Italian site um, Futterberg uh, is his name I'm hopefully pronouncing that correctly says and I quote AMD will release a black edition 8c that would be 8 core of course version of Zen this will be bundled without a cooler. This will be dedicated to overclockers. The veracity of this room is 99%, end quote. I can kind of see that. I mean, it wouldn't really make sense for them to bundle it with a cooler. And I I guess Black Edition is as close as we're going to get to an official name. I mean, that's what they've been using for a while now with the other, G with the other CPUs, excuse me. So, anyway, I thought I'd throw that in as a bit of a Brucey bonus. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal things, like, subscribe, comment, um, you know, normal bits and bobs. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.